I actually converted in September 2010 after a spiritual experience in a shrine in Iran. A completely unexpected sense of peace overwhelmed me and it was very much like a, a, a door opening that I couldn't then close. Um, but I would say that, that I've been on the path to Islam, if there is such a thing, for around five years. I think the first step towards understanding what this religion is about is to spend time with Muslim people. And I've uh, been lucky enough to work a lot in the Middle East. So the fear of Islam, the fear of what it represents, the fear of families living in the Middle East was gone very quickly. The main thing is, as a mother, I recognize the beauty of the Muslim family unit, first, first of all, before I discovered what, what it meant to pray. Um, and secondary, I think, when we see on television Muslims going, Allahu Akbar, we think in our, we hear in our minds, we're going to kill you all in a jihad. When actually all Muslims are saying is, God is great, it's really good to be here, let's work together and make a better world. And once you see that and you recognize the way people pray five times a day, I was drawn to the, to the, to the, uh, the, the spiritual cleansing, and, and it makes your life very, very different. It makes you a better person. I've got two daughters, aged seven and ten, and they were, uh, they had questions. They said, will you still be our mother? Yes. Uh, will you drink alcohol? No. And they went, hooray, which is slightly <laughs> worrying. Um, and uh, what else will it mean? And I said, well, it'll mean I, I'll pray. And now my daughters pray with me. So you'd be surprised. The transition is very natural. Islam is a, is a, is a natural faith in your daily life. My mother, who reads the tabloid press, thought I was converting to Buddhism and was happy. And when I said no Islam, she said, what, those nutters? But luckily, Islam teaches you to be really, really wonderful to your parents, especially your mother. So I sent her chocolates and flowers, and we've discussed it, and she's happy. I haven't spoken directly to Tony, but I know Sharia is a human rights activist, well, lawyer. Um, she supports other people's faith decisions. I don't refer to the Blairs about anything. I consider Tony Blair a war criminal who should be in the hate for war crimes against uh, the people of Iraq. So I'm not going to discuss Islam with him. What's between my sister and I is personal, but I don't have a relationship with Tony Blair any, any longer. It's my choice. We're made to feel really, really afraid of Islam uh, every single day with what we read in the press. I think the image of a woman as modest is sold as a woman who's repressed. And you know, somewhere in between what, we'd, what would be called in the press as mad mullahs who, uh, you know, enforce strange laws that aren't to do with Islam, and in between Baywatch and women who are completely undressed in our, in our uh, beaches and in our cities, is a really moderate way of life. And you know, wearing a scarf, it just means that I choose who I show my body and hair to. It's not so bad, it's not such a leaf, uh, it's not such a leap of faith. That's uh, a nice thing to do, it's, uh, I'm keeping things for me. I wasn't surprised at that. I've actually met some women in their 60s who don't wear the scarf and look very English, who are secret Muslims. Imagine that, old ladies who you'd expect to see shopping in a market say, yes, I'm actually Muslim, it's a lovely way of life, don't tell anyone. Such is the level of fear against what's a really nice religion to practice. But I know that the curiosity about Islam, made by the mainstream coverage of it, draws people to go to mosques and to meet Muslims, and then everything breaks down and you become interested. So actually, very... Um, racist reports against Islam are recruitments for Islam.